Jesus, God is good. We truly are the sons of God and we are made in His image. That's why we can cry, Abba, Father. What makes me say that is because of this scripture. In Romans 8, it talks about that we have received the spirit of adoption. Let me just take you to that scripture and show you what we were singing it was a Bible scripture and it truly is fit to sing because we are the sons of God. We are not mm. slaves. Yeah. We are not enemies of God. We are not sinners. Once you receive Jesus into your heart, you receive the Spirit of God. Yeah. So let That's me right. take you to Romans 8 and verse 15. This scripture says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Let's minister today on, you are a son. I think that's, that's what right. the Lord has called us, mm -hmm. you know. I believe yeah. He has called us to be sons. Yeah. Nowhere in the Bible does He call us sinners or slaves or some other thing that's unworthy. He that's calls right. us a son the highest position that we can be in. Mm. God has adopted us and we have been made sons of God. But how? How has He done that? Mm. How did He do that? Through the cross. He made a way so that we could come to through, the, through the blood of Jesus. Jesus mm. redeemed us. You know, it's interesting, this scripture says, you have not received the spirit of bondage to, to fear again, to be afraid. Mm. When we were in the world, we were sinners and we were bound to fear. I mean, we were masters of, or we were slaves of sin. We were servants of sin. And we had the right to fear. I mean, we had the spirit of fear in us. Okay, but in first, or in second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, let's just quickly read that too. This scripture says, we have not received the spirit of bondage to be afraid again. Yeah, you know, so, fear is actually a spirit. It's it a is. very controlling spirit that dominates a person's life. And for many, it's uncontrollable. Well, because well, when you don't have God, it is definitely uncontrollable. But when you have the Lord, it is possible to control it. And to say, no, you have no right over my life. It is possible to get rid of all kinds of fear. It is. Yeah. This scripture in 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is a spirit of bondage. Like in Romans it says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Hmm. So as we talk on the subject of you are a son, I want you to just keep this in mind. God has given us a spirit of power, power, hmm. okay? And there's another scripture in John 1, where it says uh, we have received the power to become sons of God. Yeah, and you know that power actually means miracle working power. It's not just a power that's like, you know, like we think of power. It's not an electricity kind of a power. Mm. That is, you know, in the physical sense, but the power of God goes greater than that. That power is the miracle working power. That is the same power that Jesus operated in, that's that right. miracle power. Yeah, it's, it's powerful, you know, because when you think of the power that God has given you, you no longer have to act like a slave. Hmm. You will start acting like a son. Yeah. Actually, you know, that scripture in John 1, 12 is really powerful. Maybe we should just quickly go to that. Yeah. Maybe you've not read this before. Maybe you've read it, but let's just see it again. Because see, once we come into the family of God, our lifestyle has to change. 
the way we live has to change. Mm. We can't live like the way we used to live mm. when we were in the world, when we were sinners. Mm. But now that we have, we have received the Spirit of God and we have got born again, the Spirit of God actually should be alive in us. Yeah. It is alive and working inside and of us. And it should be changing our lives. That's right. It should change our lives because that power has the ability to change our lives. That's right. And um, we'll just see this scripture. As we talk on you are a son, and this is actually a biblical subject. Mm. It is not uh, just something man-made. Yeah. For you to be a son is the highest position. See, when you're in a family, in a natural family, and you're the son, you know, the father knows that you are his son mm. because you came out of your mom and dad. That's right. Yeah. You are born, you are of, born of them. Yeah. And the Bible says that we are born of the incorruptible seed of the word. But let's just quickly go first to John mm. as we have turned. There's so many scriptures and sometimes, you know, this may be new for you, but we're going to take it really slow and so that you can really understand what it means to be yeah, a son. And you know, the thing is, sometimes or a lot of times we have this mentality, if you were are familiar with religion, you may have this mentality that God is like a slave master or a slave mm. driver and he can do whatever he wants. If he wants to kill me, he will. Mm. But we don't have, we have never heard of the mentality of a father and a son. But you know, this book, like we have mentioned before, it's a history book. Mm. It may be a history book to some people, but to us it's life. Mm. And it's also God's love letter to us. Mm. It's a book of promises, but more importantly, this book is a book of covenant. Right, and it may be a book of history, but it is still working. It's not history it that's passed away and something that, you know, like you study a long time ago and you know it's not happening now. It's yeah. something that is happening now. It's a book about a relationship between a father and his son. Mm. Let's read this. Yeah, scripture. let's read the scripture. We're in John chapter 1 and verse 12. Now, this is really powerful. It says, but as many as received him, that is received Jesus, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And I also want to touch on verse 13 for a minute. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So you can see your birth is not of man, it's of God. Now, of course, we have to be born physically to experience yeah. this. I mean, that is the first stage. But the most important part of your life is where the richness of your life is, is being born of the seed of God, the seed of God. And you notice it says here, to those who have received him, he has given you power to become the son. Now, you know, we are not just a son. We have received something really powerful, and that is the power of God. Like the scripture we read earlier, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. You know, a lot of places in the Bible, God says he's given us power. What mm. does that mean, power? It's not like just this power. It's a power that's really working. It's not just yeah. the muscle kind of power, that's physical right. power. It's a real power that works in every mm. area. Like, for example, take healing. Yeah. Right? Healing. You see, God, is, God says he has anointed us with the Holy Ghost and with power. So again, you have that word power coming there. And that power actually means miracle working power. Now you can't do this power on your own. You have to have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And as a son, you have received the power of God mm -hmm. on the inside of and you. And the power to become mm -hmm. sons of God. That's what this scripture yeah. says. As many as receive him. I want to point out one more thing here. Um, receive him this book always talks this bible always talks about god giving and us receiving mm. like the scripture we read in romans in romans 8 the first scripture that i spoke about it said you have not received the spirit of bondage but you have received the spirit of adoption god gave us his spirit of adoption and we receive the mm. spirit of adoption. And how do you do that? By believing on the Lord Jesus. Right. By confessing Jesus is Lord with your mouth and believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Yeah. You receive the spirit of his son. And you know, you know the you know the way actually the opposite when you receive the spirit of bondage. To receive the spirit of bondage is actually to receive the nature of Satan. Yeah. When you are in Satan's kingdom, you have the spirit of bondage working in you. That's why you can fear easily. Mm. But when you receive Jesus, 
He takes out that spirit and gives you the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. It's two different spirits. You mm. can't compare the, the nature of Satan at all with the nature of God. It's totally different. Because when you have the nature of God, you receive a power. And this power doesn't have to make you proud. In fact, it makes you bold enough to stand against the walls of the devil. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. makes you bold. It makes you bold. You know, we have to walk in boldness in this world. Hmm. You know, Satan is not afraid at all of a timid person. He knows yeah. that person doesn't know his authority. So the first key when you think of, I am a son, you know, it's good to call yourself a son. It makes you know that you're worth something. Because God has made you worth. When you came to him, you became a son automatically. You know, a son in the family does not have to try to prove himself to be a son to the father. That's right. He's already a son. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in God's kingdom. You don't have to prove to God that you are his son. You are his son because you have come into his family. You've received him. All you had to do was receive him. Yeah. And you receive the power. And while we're touching on this word power, you know, I want to take you to another scripture in Acts. Because we have so many figures in the Bible, people who walked with God and who saw this power take place, especially those in the New Testament. We see the power of God working in them. Now, what was the key to receiving the power? First of all, receiving Jesus. And then we receive the Holy Spirit. You may ask, what is this Holy Spirit? Well, he's actually the same as Jesus. He just comes to live inside of you. God is three in one. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is one of those three. And so while we're touching on this word power, so now we've kind of laid the foundation. So how do we become a son? By receiving Jesus into our life. It's a simple prayer that we pray. Lord, I receive you into my life. Come and fill me. And we receive him that way. And then when you receive him, you receive this power. Now this power is the most important part of Christian life. And so I'm going to just take you to Acts while we touch on this. Being a son. And I, I don't want to go too further in because I want to kind of just, we just want to lay the foundation of it. And um, let's see in Acts 10 verse 38 what it says. Now it says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now there we go again. Jesus had the Holy Ghost and he had the power. You can't separate the two. You can't separate the Holy Ghost from the power. Mm -hmm. Now see, as we said earlier, this power is a working power. And in the same verse, it says what the power does, how it works in your life. It says, Jesus went about doing good. Now, it was because of this power that was working on the inside of him to do good and to heal all that were oppressed of the devil, for God mm -hmm. was with him. You can't heal somebody, you can't bring deliverance to somebody without this power. Mm -hmm. You can't. That's like the Pharisees, they came and told Jesus, you're working with the power of the devils. Yeah. But Jesus said, I can't do that if I had the power of the devils. That's right. But I have the power of God in me. Yeah. That's what's enabling me to do all this. And in one place in John 10, the Pharisees say the same thing again. He has Beelzebub working inside of him yeah. or the God of the flies. And then another, uh, you know, some other people who agreed with Jesus, they said, how can a devil bring sight to the blind? That's right. You know, there were people who understood it. And I'm sure the Pharisees understood it. They just didn't want to acknowledge him. They're too mm. proud. You yeah. know, they were too proud to receive that. Mm. And so anyway, when you think of this power, this power works inside of you. When you yeah. have this power, you can lay hands on the sick. You are not afraid anymore of sickness. Mm. Sickness now is a slave to you. You start to realize that you can lay your hands and heal the sick. Now it's not in your own strength. That's why we said, you got to receive Jesus for this power to work. Yeah. This power won't work without Jesus and the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. And so Jesus, he went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And that is the key. God was with him. Yeah. You know, when you receive the spirit of the Son in your life, it's not like you said, you do it on your own. Mm. You don't. Because God's spirit, when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, it's like God's spirit fuses with your spirit and it mm. becomes one. There's a nice scripture in the book of Romans 8, the scripture that we first went to, same chapter, but in verse 11, this is what it says. Hmm. 
It's Romans 8, 11, but if the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of God, Him is God, the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So if the Spirit of God, which raised Jesus up from the dead, if He is dwelling in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. It's the mm. same Spirit that Jesus had yeah which raised him up from the dead that is now living in you. Mm. You didn't receive another half spirit of God no. or a three quarter power of God. You received the fullness of the power of yeah. God. That's why you can do the same things that Jesus That's did. That's right. And even greater works. He said you will do greater works. Mm. And all this goes back to our foundation because you are a son. Yeah. That's the reason you can do all this. Mm. I mean, that's the privilege that you have being a Christian is to know that you have received this position of being a son. That is one of the highest positions. God calls you a son. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He calls you You know, son. I was just thinking about this recently. Why did Jesus come to earth? And the Lord just pointed two main reasons. Obviously, there are other so many mm. reasons why he came to earth. But one of the reasons was to be a sacrifice and to give his life for mm. us. But the other one is also so important. Jesus came to show us how to live like sons. Mm. You know, if Jesus would have just come Okay, he would have said, sacrifice me. I'm going to be the Lamb of God, which takes away your sin. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to redeem you back from the hand of the devil. And if he would have just done that, and without just showing us how to live like sons, we wouldn't receive this power. Mm. We wouldn't know how to live like a son. Mm. But Jesus spent whatever number of years, three and a half, he spent with the disciples, with the people. He was showing them how to live like a son That's of right. God. That's right, yeah. He didn't just come here just, you know, just to you know, show himself that he's strong. Hmm. But he came to show us how we can be strong as well. Yeah, that's right. You know, actually, you can't be a witness of God without this power also. Hmm. And I was just thinking of this scripture while we were talking. And um, as we touched first on Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went about doing good. And he went and healed all that were oppressed of the devil because of this power working on the inside of him. Now Jesus was a son of God, and you have been made a son. So you can do these same things, and we're going to touch on a few scriptures that show that you are also in this same family. You are in this family. Now, mm. you know, sometimes many of us you know, have this other side where we wonder, how can I be an effective witness for Jesus? Now, on your own, you can't. You just can't. Right. You, you won't know what to say. You'll be afraid. Mm. Now we saw that the spirit of bondage against fear does not come from God. So it has to be from the opposite, from the enemy. Mm. And the enemy will try to tell you that you can't be an effective witness. Yeah. He'll try to tell you that, well, you can't speak, you don't know what to say, only the preachers can do it. Mm. But that's not true. Because the Bible shows us that all of us can be effective witnesses for Jesus. Yeah. But now, you can't do it on your own. Being a son, knowing how to live like a son of God, is impossible when you're living on your own. You gotta live by the Spirit of God on the inside. That's why we said the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. Yeah. He comes to live on the inside of you. He's not going away at all. No. He won't go away. He and so let's, yeah. He'll never leave you nor That's forsake right. you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he has never, you know, forgotten that promise. He mm. remembers that. So now God has given you power. And this power actually enables you to be bold as a lion. Mm. You don't have to be timid anymore. You know, 2 Timothy 1.7, like we read earlier, God has not given you a spirit of fear. Mm. You don't have to be afraid of being a witness for Jesus anymore. Mm. Because let, let me show you this scripture. It's so powerful. Now, we'll go to the book of Acts, the same book in Acts. We're just running back to that book of Acts because there are two powerful verses in the book of Acts. One we read just now was Acts 10.38. So when you have the power you will start going around doing good. You will you'll be able to you know, lay your hands on the sick and they will recover because of the power on the inside of you. That's right. Now, you will also be able to be an effective witness for Jesus, to tell others. Hmm. In the book of Acts 1, and we read verse 8. Now, verse 8 says, But you shall receive power. So there we go again. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria 
and to the utmost part of the earth. Wow, isn't that wonderful? It's awesome. It's awesome. That scripture is so powerful. That should just make you want to rejoice and say, I can be a witness for Jesus. Yeah. I have received the power. I have the same yeah. power that, that Jesus had when he went around the world That's preaching. right. You know, he, he said that you shall receive power. He told these disciples. Now, who were the disciples? Some of them were fishermen. Yeah. Some of them were tax collectors. Mm. They were just ordinary people. That's right. But they received Jesus. They that was the main thing. They made a to receive Jesus. Yeah, and because they received Jesus, they received the power to do exactly what he did. That's all that you know, God wants from you, is mm. just to receive him. And God is not holding anything back from you. He's not saying, okay, I'm going to give you a little mm. bit of power to see if you're able to handle yeah. it. He said, if you receive me, you receive power. That's right, you receive the you power. receive all the power, in fact. Mm. Not just, at, like we said, not yeah. half the power. And this power yes. is what enables you to be a witness for mm. Jesus. You know, it's not difficult. Some of us say, well, I want to witness to somebody. I got to tell them, but I just can't. Mm -hmm. Well, you can, according to this verse, you can. Mm -hmm. You receive Jesus in your life. You have received yeah. the power to be a witness. In fact, yeah. Jesus spoke about the Holy Ghost when he mm -hmm. was talking in John 14, 15, 16, several chapters there. Mm -hmm. He was talking about this power, about the Holy Spirit. And one thing he said was, this Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is going to testify of me mm. about Jesus. Yeah. So that means that the Holy Ghost that is in you, the Holy Spirit who is in you, knows everything that happened mm. in Jesus' days. And That's right. even which is happening now. So then that means that you can be a bold, effective witness and if people ask you, how do you know that Jesus existed? How do you know that he mm. did all this? The same spirit is on the inside of you. That's right. The same spirit is on the inside of you. That's why you can be a witness for Jesus. Mm. So now when you know that you are a witness for Jesus, you know that you have received the power, then you can go about doing mm. exactly what Jesus did. That's living like a son. That's living like a son. Living like a son is not to live like a slave. No. When you live like a son, it doesn't mean you're proud. It just means you know who is on the inside of you and you can do the same works that he did. If you look at the world out today, it's full of you know, strife and there's envy, there is sickness, misery and sadness. But when you have Jesus on the inside of you, you know that you are a son, you can be a witness. But the key is knowing that you have that miracle working power on the inside of you. Mm. You are not a helpless being. You have been given that position of sonship. And that position enables you to be a witness for Jesus. You know, the Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit who speaks through us. Yeah. But the most important thing is getting into the Word. When you get into God's Word, you will realize how much of a son you are. How much of a son. Maybe you've been timid and shy and afraid. And you know, even as we close the program, we're going to pray this prayer of boldness. Today you can be a witness. Maybe today you want to go and witness to somebody and you've always had this urge in you to witness but you can't. Well, let me tell you today that you can. You've got the Holy Spirit. He will give you the words to speak. Mm -hmm. So Shalom, let's pray. Let's pray yeah. a prayer of boldness for those who are watching, that they can be a witness. You That's are right. a son. Yeah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. I pray for all the viewers, Father, that as, you, as they receive you as their Lord and Savior, you put you put your spirit into their hearts, Father, and they receive that spirit. And that spirit will create a sense of boldness. The power of the Holy Spirit will come into them and they will say, I'm not shy anymore. I'm not timid anymore. I have the spirit of God on the inside of me. Thank you, Jesus, mm. for revealing yourself to them and showing them that they can be bold, powerful, effective witnesses who can have the miracle working power of God to do healing, supernatural works and miracles and teach the word, preach the word and we thank you for the Holy Spirit Father which is our comfort and our helper and we thank you Jesus that this program has been a blessing to them and they will use these tools that the scriptures that we've given them to be effective witnesses and sons of God in Jesus name Amen Amen, amen.